everybody, welcome. Andrew Ains with Golf Academy here. As always, a very warm welcome. Thanks for tuning in and watching the video. Um, surprising one today. Let me tell you what's going on. Every now and again as a YouTuber, I get approached by companies from all over the world, really. Um, and this company called Cutter Golf sent me an email saying, do you fancy trying out our new wedge? And I'm like, yeah, sure. Send one over. So it came from America and it arrived last week. And I'm going to give it a full review. Now, as you're probably aware at the moment in England, I'll be careful not to say the UK, because some parts of the UK, like Wales, are open for golf. But certainly in England at the moment, and it's the 20th of November, we're still in lockdown and all the golf courses are closed, driving ranges. So I can't get this out on the golf course, which is what I'd like to do. I'm going to do two reviews on this wedge. I'm going to do an indoor review today tell you a little bit more about the wedge because there's a lot to talk about, hit some shots indoors and then I'll probably have to take it into my back garden where I've got a little bit of room because I really want to hit this club off turf and you'll see why when we give you a good look about it. So thank you um, for Cutter Golf for sending this to me. I always say to the companies that send me the product, you know, I'm more than happy to do a review for you but I will be quite honest about it just because you've sent me the the goods, um, you know, free of charge. I'm not going to give it a rave review unless I think it's worthy of it. So I've got to be upfront and honest about this club, which which I will be. So it's exciting. Always nice to receive you know, new clubs to try. And I'm hoping one day um, I'm approaching 10,000 subscribers, and that's all down to you people who are watching my videos. And if you're not subscribed, give that button a little click down there. I'm hoping as the channel you know, does grow eventually into a bigger number, some of the bigger manufacturers may send me products to review before the clubs come out. You know, companies like I work with Ping and Mizuno and Cobra may send me products ahead so I can do um, some reviews before the product actually comes to launch. But yeah, you live in hope. And maybe I'm, I'm not, certainly not big enough to get presented with that equipment just yet. So that's just fine. I'm enjoying what I'm doing. So. Let me show you some pictures of this club. Now, when you first look at the video, which I'm just putting up in front of you here, you're going to think, wow, that is like something I've never seen before. And you're quite right. It's something I've never seen before. So what I'm really interested in is to talk to you about why this wedge is designed the way it is. Because when you pick it up, it's like, whoa, what is going on? It's like it's coming from another planet. There's quite a lot of tech to talk about here. This is not a club which has just been thrown together and made you know, out in the Far East. It's got science behind it. So there is a website you can go to, you just Google Cutter Golf. There's a lot of information on there, but I'm gonna try and give you as much info as I can as to why Cutter think this wedge is better than anything else that's on the market. And then we'll try and put it to the test. So let me try and not bore you too much with it, but let's give you some snapshots on the cutter wedge. First thing to say is it comes in right and left handed, comes in 52, 56 and 50 degree loss. It's fitted with a steel shaft. Um, I'll give you some overheads of the shaft. Um, it doesn't say what shaft it is. It um, just says cutter golf on it. It doesn't say if it's regular or stiff. Uh, there's a label up here saying made in China. And I will just say about the grip, it's got Cutter Golf logos on it. Um, it's almost like a tour velvet grip. And my only criticism at the moment at this club, so far, and I have hit it, and there, there isn't a lot to criticize, there's a lot to talk about, is maybe the grip feels a little bit on the cheap side. And I see this a lot sometimes on emerging companies for that extra dollar or dollar fifty or whatever it costs, stick a decent grip on there. You know, stick a golf pride grip on or multi compound or something. It's not a bad grip. It just feels potentially slightly on the cheap side. So that's my only negative going forward at the moment. Let's tell you a little bit about the tech. So this is all off the Cutter Golf website. I will be um, putting some text as I talk so that you can see the text as well as talking as well. So it's got the highest rate of MOI. MOI is moment of inertia, which basically means forgiveness. And uh, it's got a rating in the industry of much, much higher. They tested this wedge against lots of the wedges. It's 20, 26% higher MOI than any other wedge that they've tested, which is quite interesting. The sole cuts through similar fashion. Imagine a, a hull of a boat. 
sort of going through water. Imagine that cutting through the water. This is kind of how this shaped soul works. Um, the high, o, high MOI will resist twisting and the off center hits. So if you do catch a ball a bit up higher at the toe, then you can get away with it a little bit more. And the unique wedge shape expands the surface area for maximum contact and consistent shots. And the club cuts through all surfaces and manages any life. Well, we're going to put that to the test because we're going to try it off various mat surfaces. And the second video, the outdoor video, we'll try it off grass in tight lies, we'll try it in heavy, rough, stuff like that. Um, so hitting the club, it's self-aligning center balanced face. The club will glide or cut through turf and the blade has 66% less of a leading edge. So leading edge meaning this part of the club is what we refer to as the leading edge. And you can see there's very little leading edge there. So the theory there, I guess, is that there's less to contact with the turf. So we're going to get this glide or this cut through it. Um, just show you these close-up shots here. I know I've given some video, separate video, but it is an odd-looking club to look at. But um, anyway, we're going to hit it in a minute. What else can I tell you about it? Um, the ball jumps off the face. Why? There's no toe or heel drag to open or close the face. And again, sorry, just going back to looking at it from head on. So you can see here there's very going to be very little interaction with the heel or the toe. Uh, because of the way they've designed the club. And um, because there's no, no interaction with the toe or the heel, uh, it's not going to drag her over the club face. Um, and the club has a 75% larger sweet spot than the average wedge. As I said, 52, 56, 58 in right and left hand. And what I can work out on the website, they're shipping, they said they're the shipping to 33 countries worldwide. Um, $129 per wedge. There is a deal, I think, if you buy three wedges, but do be aware, this came into the UK, and as I say, they, they sent me the wedge for free, um, so which is nice, and I've been paid, I don't get paid to do these reviews or anything like that, but there were import duties for it to come into the UK, it's around about 30, 32 pounds, I think, were the, the landing duty, the import duty, so, just check first of all if you are going to buy one of these and get it shipped outside of the US. You, depending on what country you live in, there's going to be some taxes to probably import this in. It's going to vary wherever you are in the world. So just bear that in mind. So there we go. That's enough chit chat. Let's go and hit some shots and see how this club performs. Follow me. Right, everybody. First test is just to hit a few chips off the mat here onto the Huxley Putting Green. I've got the 56 degree version here and I want a fairly tight mat. Um, I'll give you a little overhead of what it looks like from above, but it does look slightly strange to start with. It's not a bad start, just hold one there. I do spend quite a bit of time on this chipping mat, so uh, I, I pretty much know where to land this, but I'm just interested. And there's a, there's a really heavy, chunky sort of strike, and I managed to get away with that quite easily. Another one just lipping out. So I'm trying to test. I'm going to try and hit this one a little bit towards the toe. Oh, just kind of get that one a little bit. <laughs> we'll try that one again. Just out towards the toe. Again, really hit that way off the toe, but the performance held up really well. It does. I mean, the initial reaction here is it does seem to interact really well with the map off this sort of tight line. I'm going to go and hit a few full shots now. So there we go. We'll spin the cameras around and we'll do that. Be right back. So I've had a few full shots with a cutter wedge. As I said earlier, I've got a 56 degree wedge in my hand. I've got a green set down there at approximately 90 yards and I've got some Bridgestone Tour golf balls on the deck. So we're going to hit a couple of shots and see what sort of numbers we get. Bad strike, felt a little bit toey to start with. Woo! Jumped back a little bit, didn't it? So it's strike location there did feel a little bit out the toe. Let's just get you some numbers if we can. Uh, I've got GCT HMT head measurement technology. So that felt a bit toey to me, but it's actually saying uh, I got that mid-center. 
Um, I'm interested more in spin numbers here than anything else. So we've got that on club speed, 73 and a half miles an hour, with ball speed of 76. Uh, carry distance was 92. Backspin rate was just under 9,000, launching at 30 degrees. So obviously the golf ball that I'm hitting has quite a big effect on the sort of backspin rates that I can deliver. But the mat I'm hitting off here, and I've got a slow motion picture of impact here. I'm not quite sure that will, we'll, we'll have a look at it. I'll put it on now and you can see impact. And um, it's quite a spongy surface that I'm hitting off on the first map here. And it, and it does seem to be sort of coping with it quite well. Um, is it coping with it any better than a normal wedge? It's a little bit hard to say at the moment. Again, not a bad strike. Oh, GC2 didn't quite pick that one up. Let's go again. We'll hit that a little bit harder than I wanted to, so the yardage there will, will go up. That one's gone up to a 98-yard carry. It carried away with that. But in terms of forgiveness, there's, there's plenty of club face here to hit. So, yeah, I don't think it would matter too much to the performance here. If I hit it out of the middle of the club or a little bit out of the heel, a little bit out of the toe, Again, just over hit that one a touch, but the spin numbers coming back look pretty consistent. Um, so those first three shots that I've measured, um, I'm quite good at keeping my club speed fairly constant with the wedges. And you can see I'm spinning there eight, nine, eight, nine, seven, five. So averaging there about eight and a half thousand revs of spin. Just gonna try a couple off a slightly tighter line. So I'm just going to change the mat position. So I'm just coming off a slightly, say, a slightly tighter lie to hit off. Not as much sort of give underneath this one. Let's move GC2 into position. There we go. So this would equate to sort of hitting off a fairly tight, firm line where the, the club may bounce a little. Let's just see how it reacts with this harder surface. Oh yeah, line I can really feel that that sole there interacting with, with the mat. And I did. I think, in fairness, it felt a little bit heavy, the strike, but the result, as you can see, was, was pretty good, wasn't it? So, interesting stuff. Oh, yeah. I can really feel that club sort of bouncing off the hard surface, but I seem to be getting away with the strike just fine. It's, what's my verdict on this club? I kind of like it. I'm not exactly sure at the moment how much better it is than the conventional wedge. I can see the thinking behind it with the design. I'm really interested to get this out on some turf. And at the moment in the UK over here, it's wet and cold. So my lawn at the moment is pretty saturated. So it would be interesting next video, and I'll, I'll get it done over the weekend, hopefully, to try and hit some shots off a really sort of heavy, muddy type line, see how it works. But so far, so good. I can really see the benefits of it. Um, but I really need to get this on grass. But uh, I quite like the idea of it. So have a little look at, I hope you enjoyed the video today. It's something a little bit different from Cutter Golf. And I do advise you to go to their website. There's lots of information on there, which are videos that other people have done, like Rick Shields and lots of other YouTubers who are much bigger YouTubers than myself. So it has been reviewed, but uh, I think my first impression of this is pretty good. So, uh, hey, thanks for watching the video today. And uh, say, click the subscribe button, give it a little thumbs up if you think it's worthy of one of those. I'll be back soon. Bye for now.